We have uncovered a remarkable planet. A world of extreme weather. Alien landscapes. And bizarre phenomena. It's the most complex system we know of in the universe. That planet is Earth. And we are only beginning to unlock its secrets. Even with what's already known about this world, it continues to surprise and mystify. Beneath its surface, a bizarre underworld operates by its own rules, with its own climate. It's extremely hot. If you were in there unprotected, you would have about 10 minutes before you die. What strange forces caused towers of rock to rise from this lake? What secret creatures are remaking these earthly landscapes into alien worlds? These are the strangest places, and they hold the deepest secrets of the Earth. Any visitor passing through the solar system would notice how strange planet Earth appears. And a closer look reveals only more strangeness. I'm not saying that such places don't exist elsewhere, but I think that they're very, very rare. Looking at our solar system and other exoplanets, we do not yet know of anything quite like Earth. And so in a sense, Earth is the strangest of all. One of the strangest sites on Earth exists in Mexico's Chihuahuan Desert. 1,000 feet under Nica Mountain. Giant, mysterious white crystals crisscross a dark cavern, creating a real-life version of Superman's Fortress of Solitude. Few humans have experienced the crystals in person. NASA planetary scientist Chris McKay is one who has. The crystals are really quite amazing, awe-inspiring. Walking into this room, you see absolutely spectacular, perfectly shaped crystals that are this big around and as long as a telephone pole. Beautifully formed, crystal clear. The crystal cave has its own extreme climate, where the temperature blisters at 120 degrees Fahrenheit. This comes from the heat emanating up from a magma chamber below the cave. It's extremely hot, very, very high humidity. In fact, if you were in there unprotected, you would have about 10 minutes before you died. So when we go in the cave, we wear special suits carrying ice packs to allow us to stay in the cave for 30, 40 minutes. How did these giant crystals end up here? in this hellish environment. The first secret is gypsum, a common mineral that's also the main ingredient in drywall. Gypsum-rich water once filled this cave completely. In the presence of heat and water, some minerals dissolve. But gypsum turns brittle and crystallizes. For half a million years, the gypsum crystals grew underwater and undisturbed. It wasn't until 2000 that a mining operation probing for precious metals discovered the chamber. It pumped out the water and revealed this unique treasure. NASA astrobiologists like Chris McKay are studying microorganisms encased in the crystals. This alien environment has given him a chance to try out techniques that can be used to hunt for life on alien planets. We are exploring methods that can do remote sensing into the crystal to study what's inside them without damaging the crystal. The same technologies that allow us to explore a rock on Mars from several meters away allow us to look at the microorganisms that are entombed in these crystals. 
An initial survey revealed that the chamber held a total of 170 crystals. Scientists, however, have a limited time to study them. Once the mining operations cease and stop removing water, the chamber will flood again, sealing it forever. Just 500 miles to the northeast of Nica, the rolling hills of central Texas cover their own unexpected explosion of crystals. The strange alien formations of the caverns of Sonora. Most caves you go into, you're in these bedrock tunnels with stalactite and stalagmite here and there. But here, the whole thing is virtually crystal. The spectacular world of the caverns remained a secret, unknown to humans until the early 20th century. When a dog chased a raccoon into a 20-inch opening between some rocks. When the locals explored the opening, they discovered a deep pit that prevented them from traveling more than 500 feet from the entrance. Finally, in 1955, three cavers managed to cross the pit. On the other side, they discovered seven miles of passages, almost entirely coated with crystals. Although these crystals are underground, the secret to their creation begins with weather on the surface. 20 inches of rain fall here every year. That rainfall seeps through the ground, picking up minerals as it finds its way into the limestone bedrock surrounding the caverns, 150 feet below the surface. The limestone is like a sponge. It holds a lot of water. It doesn't come in real fast, but it, it drips, you know, a steady drip most of the time. As water arrives through the cave ceiling, it sheds calcite minerals. A single crystal forms in the stagnant water, taking the shape of a lopsided box. Instead of dripping down to form stalactites or stalagmites, the crystals stack together into a variety of strange configurations. It isn't just moving water shaping the caves. A silent and nearly invisible force is at work here, too and it has to do with the cave's weather. Moist air is coming through the cave. It runs along the wall and it's dissolving this backside. And down here you see that it curves with the direction of airflow. Now you'd think that maybe there was a hurricane of airflow moving down through here, but this is really just very, very gentle breeze that you probably wouldn't even feel. That's happened over thousands and thousands of years. Water and rock mix all the time on Earth. But in one place, the water is so strange, it brings something that looks like an alien world up to the surface. In some secret corners of planet Earth, even the water is strange. Through the Sierra Morena Mountains of southwestern Spain, a bizarre river runs blood red. The unusual color of the Rio Tinto comes from a high concentration of dissolved iron picked up from the area's rocks. In southwestern Turkey, shockingly blue pools of water sit on a bizarre landscape of what appear to be icy terraces. But this place isn't icy at all. Known as Pamukkale, Turkish for Cotton Castle, this strange place is actually made of rock. 17 boiling hot springs spit jelly-like calcium carbonate, also known as limestone or chalk, out onto the hillside. The naturally white mineral then cools and hardens. The hot springs have been attracting tourists here since Roman times. There's a whole line of these springs issuing out in one location, and the springs have probably been active for maybe a couple of million years. And there you've built up terraces that are literally hundreds of feet high. On the other side of the planet, 
just to the east of Yosemite in California. Even stranger water laps onto the shores of Mono Lake. It lies 400 miles from the nearest ocean, but it's salty. Adding to the oddity, the water foams like soap and grows gnarled rocky spires. Making this alien setting even more unusual are its shockingly unpredictable winds. They can transform the waters of Mono Lake from glass-like calm to dangerous whitecaps in just minutes. August 31, 2008. An experienced local kayaker took to the waters when suddenly the winds roared to life. In minutes, they had spun up to 80 miles per hour. The hurricane force winds launched so much foam into the air that pilots flying over at 30,000 feet thought one of the islands in the lake was erupting like a volcano. The local man's kayak was found beached on an island two days later, and his body was discovered some 700 feet down the shore. Writer Mark Twain nearly suffered the same fate over 150 years earlier, when a sudden storm almost capsized his boat on Mono Lake. He later wrote that he was afraid the boat would be swamped by a hundred gallons of soap suds. However, the lake Mark Twain saw was very different then. The peculiar columns crowding the lake shore weren't there. The reason that they're exposed now is because the water supply to Mono Lake has been depleted over the last many decades to provide water for urban areas in California. So the lake level has gone down. So these structures have been revealed. If the lake were back to its historic level, we'd be underwater right now. What's the secret of the Rocky Towers? The lake rests over a series of freshwater springs that bubble up from below. That spring water carries minerals like calcium. When it comes into contact with the lake water, it solidifies into limestone, the same compound found in Turkey at Pamukkale. The odd water of Mono Lake comes from the rain and snow that falls on the surrounding mountains, runs through the rocks, and ends up in the lake. And so the water leaching through those rocks is bringing a real interesting mix that reflects the chemistry of the rocks that surround the lake. Besides a heavy dose of salt, the lake water contains an unusual amount of sodium bicarbonate, or baking soda. That's what causes the water to foam. On a windy day, the wind whips the carbonates up off the surface of the lake, and they pile up on shore like this. Strange places can emerge where water is nowhere to be seen. In a desert, an almost invisible crack in the land bears the scars of an ancient earthly force, one that returns again and again. Desert landscapes seem to breed strange places. One of these hides inside of a long crack in a rocky hill on Navajo territory, about 300 miles north of Phoenix. This is Antelope Canyon. This is an interesting place because of its shape. It's incredibly deep relative to its width and it has remarkably sculpted walls. A sliver of powdery red sand flows over the floor. It runs for over 1,000 feet between gently curving 100-foot tall walls. Why is it so steep and narrow? And how are the walls so impossibly smooth? As with most canyons, flowing rivers are part of the secret. That's especially true here in Red Canyon country, where the rocky ground hardly absorbs any water. 
The process began 150 million years ago, when floodwaters carrying sand found just the slightest of fractures at the top of this ancient sand dune. Over time, that water ground through the stone like a chainsaw. There is an area of land upstream that collects the water from rainstorms and concentrates it in this channel, and it enters the canyon. On August 12, 1997, the canyon became a death trap. A rainstorm several miles away filled the incoming channel with four feet of water. It surged into a nearby branch and transformed into a 30-foot deep swell, drowning 11 unsuspecting tourists. Two of their bodies were never found. The floodwaters aren't arriving empty-handed. I'm standing in the dry stream bed of Antelope Canyon, and I'm standing next to a series of terraces, and it indicates that the entrance to the canyon often fills up with very large volumes of sediment that end up getting funneled through the canyon. Most of that incoming sediment is sand, but the floodwaters also pick up sand from the walls themselves. Known as Navajo sandstone, the red rock of Antelope Canyon is made up of piles and piles of sand packed together. This area at one time was a giant sand dune that covered this region millions of years ago. Then we had glacier ice that came in from the north. Water put pressure on the sand, compressed it, and turned it into stone. I have two pieces of the Navajo sandstone the same rock that makes up Antelope Canyon. Just by rubbing these two rocks together, I've created a very smooth surface on each of the rocks. So it's much like what is happening inside the canyon during a flood. The Navajo name for the canyon is the place where the water runs through the rocks. Even today, floods charge through the canyon up to eight times a year. The water comes through spinning and violently turning, very similar to a washing machine. And it carves out the canyon walls that way, making it smooth. Sometimes, this world hides its secrets within the walls of a nearly hidden canyon. Other times, it bears its all, right in the open, in the most unexpected of places. The strangest places on Earth are often found in the most desolate corners of the planet. But even for this world, a fountain gushing non-stop from the floor of a barren wasteland is especially bizarre. Here in Nevada's Black Rock Desert, that's only part of the oddity. This is Fly Geyser. It's still growing and fast. What's a little unusual here is the amount of material that has come out on the surface and accumulated just in a matter of several decades. The secret to why fly geyser grows here in the middle of the desert has to do with how that water gets here. It starts off normally as rain and snowfall landing on the surrounding mountains. As this water trickles toward Fly Geyser, it encounters a natural furnace created by movement in this region's terrain. The crust here is being pulled apart, it's being stretched, and so there's lots and lots of fault lines and fractures. The snow can melt and percolate downward along those faults and fractures. This steamy water collects beneath Fly Geyser in an aquifer, a reservoir of saturated rocks. All the water needs to reach the surface is a crack. In 1964, hot water burst to the surface and started dumping a heavy dose of minerals, especially calcium carbonate. The same mineral that makes up the cave walls of Sonora and the towers of Mono Lake. Here, it first accumulates into rounded towers. Then, 
as it trickles to the ground and settles. The calcium carbonate hardens and forms individual pools. Calcium carbonate is normally white, but a strange form of life clinging to the geyser is covering it up. There's a couple different types of algae here. There's a green algae and a red algae, and algae loves warm, mineral-rich water. This particular algae thrives in searing heat, where other earthly life cannot. As fly geyser continues to gush, grow, and cultivate life in the middle of a dusty basin, it takes its place with the other bizarre mysteries of Earth. We see some of these phenomena individually on other planets and moons. But to get all the kinds of attributes that we have here on Earth, I think is really quite rare in the universe. It is only by examining all the workings of this world, common and peculiar, that we begin to comprehend how strange this Earth is.